Hi everybody and welcome back to Cheatash. My name is Chris and today we're going to be switching gears a little bit and going back to a book that we have been slowly going through called Eloquent JavaScript. The last videos that I had posted for this were regarding chapter 7 and chapter 7 had a final section which was like a code along exercise. I decided to skip that today. It probably won't be a bad idea to go through that final section of chapter seven, but I wanted to get a video out in a timely fashion to you guys. So I chose to do this section of a new chapter, chapter eight, which is titled Bugs and Errors, all about what I'm guessing here is like error catching, um, using try catch statements, debugging, etc. All those things are what I'm guessing are gonna be in this chapter actions but before i was doing the whole chapter but now i'm just going to do these uh short short little sections and i'm sorry about that guys let me go back there we go so javascript is a loosely typed language which is really really great sometimes and then other times it can be actually a hindrance it's really great that you don't have to declare like a variable type and you can assign a string to a variable, then you can assign like a number to a variable all within the same file. But it can also be a hindrance as far as code readability. Like, yeah, sure, it's, it's great that you can assign multiple different types to a variable, but will your Will your reader get confused? Will your coworker get confused when you do things like that? It, co it, it comes with the territory. There's an advantage and a disadvantage to it. And in general, JavaScript is going to throw errors when you don't follow the language's grammar rules itself. So there's certain things. It's not just like spelling errors, but there's uh, other errors that could potentially happen that it'll throw but it doesn't because it's so loosely typed but there's a way for it to throw those errors so they can come to fruition basically so they can come out into the light and then errors is you know part of it's going to be about debugging which is the process of finding mistakes aka bugs and then this kind of coincides with the clean coder and the clean code book that we were reading and how your code should strive to be error free. It's not it's not going to be error free all the time, but that should be your base point. And you shouldn't create new bugs when you code. That's a, that's another big point that I learned from Dr. or not Dr. <laughs> uh, Uncle Bob Martin's books. So how do we get JavaScript to throw these grammar errors that aren't usually thrown? Well, we can enter into strict mode. Strict mode was introduced in ES5. I think right now we're in ES6, I believe. And its goal was to make JavaScript more reliable. It fixes potential problematic behavior from the language by making the... IDE or the, the browser or whatever you're coding and throw an error for certain grammar mistakes. And this is a very easy thing, easy thing to do and an easy thing to enter into or to initiate. You use this keyword here, uh, use strict within quotes, semicolon, and you use it either at the top of a file or at the top of a function. And then everything below it is going to be used strictly. And it's going to look out for certain grammatical and questionable actions and grammatical errors. So it's going to throw errors for more questionable actions. And it's going to aim to improve code quality, uh, in especially avoiding implicit behavior. So, oh, you know, implicit. So explicit would be like, you know, like you explicitly state that this variable is a string, but implicit is like, oh, you just assign a string to it and you don't, you don't necessarily declare the type. It's going to remove certain problem features. And these are just some examples of the errors that will happen. And then I have examples for them on the next few pages. So if you try to create duplicate object property names, it will throw an error. If you try to assign 
octal number literals, it'll throw an error. So numbers starting with zero, so like zero, one, zero, two, it's from a base eight, uh, base eight um, numbering system versus, you know, regular numbers are base 10, I believe. So 01 doesn't necessarily, I think 01 does equal one, but then you get into like 0052 in our numbering system, it's not 52, it's actually like something else. And there's a way to calculate that. We, we won't go into that, but uh, if you use the delete operator, that'll throw an error. And I guess I never knew that JavaScript had a delete operator that you can use to just like delete variables. And maybe it's a sort of way of uh, garbage cleanup, uh, like in uh, Java, which most of the time I don't think you even have to worry about anymore. But lastly, uh, assigning a value to an undeclared variable will yield a reference error. So this is what uStrict is going to do. It's going to look for some of these errors more intensely and throw errors. It's going to look for some of these actions, how about that, and throw errors uh, when it comes across them. So examples. In non-strict mode, you create a global variable when you don't necessarily assign like a let or a const to this. So you have window.myvar, right? You're assigning it the string hello. Now when you console.log it out, it's going to print hello. But normally you would need a const or a let or a var, you know, something like that, some sort of variable modifier, not, not a variable modifier, but you know, some sort of indication that this is like a variable you're declaring and instantiating. So when you use strict mode, and we see the use strict up there, when you try to print window.myvar, it's going to throw a reference error for my var because we're not saying, we're not using the keywords let or const or var here. So that's one example of strict mode in action. Uh, another one is this one. So we have the same. So now we're declaring my var using the var keyword. And then now we're going to go to delete my var. So when you're not using strict mode, you'll be able to delete this. You'll be able to delete this. And you just say delete my var. This is interesting. I never knew this before, guys. I, I really didn't. Um, when you do this and you delete my var, then when you try to print it out, it's, you're going to get it undefined. But before the delete, you see there you still get hello. Now in strict mode, you're going to throw a reference error when trying to delete a variable. I guess this is just not allowed in, in strict mode. So you try to delete my var and it's going to throw this reference error. My var is not uh, defined. Which is interesting because I feel like it is defined up here and you're able to print it here and you're using my, you're using you strict, but I guess just the delete operator not allowed in strict mode. Next example. So these are the octal numbers. So in non-strict mode, you can see you can assign an octal number. Um, but when you print it out, see it prints out. In the way you make this calculation and let me see if I remember this correctly. Um, you start at the rightmost. I think it's the rightmost number. And then you multiply it by 8 to the power of 0, then 8 to the power of 1, and 8 to the power of uh, 2 for every time you're moving to the left, you add 1 to the power. But that now I'm looking at that, and that's actually not correct. That's well, that's not going to get us 15. So I forget exactly how how you how you move that or how you convert that. But anyway, that's, that's the octal number, and this is when you print it out, it'll print the base 10 uh, conversion of it. Now, when you use strict assign an octal number to a variable, it's going to throw a syntax error. And it's going to basically tell you that, you know, octal numbers are not allowed. And last example here, when you try to assign multiple property names in a non-strict mode setting, it's just going to take the last 
property that you have of that property name. So in this case, we have two properties, both with the key of name. Sorry, sipping my green tea. So when you print out object.name, it's going to take the last one in the object. So in this case, doe. It doesn't print out John. The last one was doe. So it's going to print out doe. In strict mode, this would not be allowed. And it wouldn't even allow you to print that because it's going to throw an error when you create this var object down here. And it's going to throw a type error. And it's, it's basically going to tell you, you know, there's duplicate there's duplicate property names. You can't have that. So in some cases, you can see where this would actually be a good thing. Like if you have a huge long object in your files and maybe you have multiple people people working on it and you, you know, you have multiple property names because you're not keeping track of everything. It's such a big object. Maybe you strict here would make sense. And then you can see in other instances, maybe you strict would be like super annoying, <laughs> potentially. So there's right and wrong, or there's good and bad times to use strict mode. When's a good time to use it? Maybe when you're first starting off a new project. So in order to enforce better coding practices from the jump, from the very start of your project. So it sets the tone for the rest of your project large code bases. Like I said, if you have a huge, large file and it's a huge, large object and it's hard to track down uh, where a bug is, you can use strict. And that way you have, you have that whole file like kept track of. So even if multiple people are working on it, you have a strict data set. You have like a strict template of how things are, things are looked at and grammatical errors are looked at. In that file. Also, it's good when starting out and just learning good uh, JavaScript habits and not doing certain things that are, you know, you know, faux, uh, faux pas uh, essentially in the language. And you know, it's kind of similar thing. You know, when you're first starting out learning, let's say, well, no, let's say JavaScript and you don't like skip lines and you don't have code naturally and it's going to cause less readability. It's AI, PI.AI for uh, some of the examples in this, so a little bit different. I, I, I haven't been using ChatGPT as much just because I find it to be very slow. Check out the podcast, new interview, uh, clip coming out soon. And thank you guys so much for listening. My name is Chris. This has been Cheatash. Take care, everybody.